Hey everybody, it's Zipic, and welcome back to another Rust base build. Today I'll be showcasing my solo duo 2x1 roof bunker design. I've played plenty of wipes in this base, and it never seems to let me down. With a cheap upkeep and build cost, you can convert your 2x1 starter into this design on only wipe day. The base comes complete with an airlocked roof access, and also a basic roof bunker which is very simple to build even for new players. Even with the base's small design, it can still fit up to 20 large boxes on the top and bottom floor. Let's get right into the base tour, and then I'll show you guys how to build it. Heading right up to our front door, you'll notice the two external TCs. This makes the base very difficult to overtake or grief if raided. Heading through the front door airlock, we have a window on the left side, and on the right we have a sheet metal double door, which will serve as a triple airlock. Going through our garage door path, we'll come to a research table, large box, locker, and also a few extra bags. Opening up these two garage doors will give us full access to the main second story of our base. On the right side, we have a drop box loot room, as well as two vending machines behind a reinforced window. And if we continue on and to the left side of the base, we'll have our roof access to the design. Again, I've added a two-door airlock heading up to the roof, which of course adds another layer of protection from anyone outside. As we head back downstairs, notice the trap which holds the drop down from the roof. And also we have a second one inside our bunker. If we head onto the roof piece, you'll notice there's nowhere to go from here. So we'll go ahead and spawn in my downstairs bag and continue the tour on from there. Now downstairs, we have access to a couple vending machines, our tier 3, and of course our TC, 4 large boxes, and 4 small boxes. Quickly, let's take a look at the TC upkeep, and now turning around, we can open up the door into our bunker access. To maximize the storage space, I've added a few barbecues and small boxes on the floor, and after removing the glass window, we can destroy this big triangle, and then our roof piece will fall. This will give us access to the rest of our base. Now quickly, I'll give you a tutorial of how to seal off the bunker, and then we'll get right into the base build. So let's begin by building a basic 2x1 starter design. The reason I like using this base so much is with its simple starter base that everyone knows how to build. If the wipe in the area you're building in does not go that well, you can simply move locations and you won't have an issue rebuilding the base. The only step I'm doing a little differently in my 2x1 is keeping my very front door frame wood. This is because we're going to end up picking it out later on. Make sure your TC goes in this corner on the same side as the door, and then you guys can begin to build in your 2x1 starter design. Feel free to copy my design or make your own based on what you like. Now whenever it is you're ready to expand, we can begin by adding in all of the surrounding foundations around our 2x1. For those of you who need a little bit more help, here's what that should look like from above. We'll start by sealing off our front door with walls, and also adding in a second layer of honeycomb separating the two sections. For the time being, we'll craft a barbecue, and use that to jump out of our base. Of course, we can also place a few small boxes for extra storage space. Once on top, we can fill in the newly built honeycomb with a roof, and also place in two walls on the back side of our drop down, and two door frames on the front side. Don't forget to add roof pieces on top, and we'll use sheet metal double doors for both of these slots. I'm now going around and I'm going to fill in all of the open honeycomb foundations that we left from before. To fit in a few extra boxes in our TC room later on, we're going to fit in this triangle floor tile on the opposite side of our drop down. And then we can continue on and honeycomb this area. Let's add all the roof tiles on top of our honeycomb. And now we're going to need a way to get up to our base that's more permanent. So we're going to go ahead and build a slanted roof tile, which comes off the side of our base just like this. 
Make sure your roof tile is facing the same way mine is. This allows you to honeycomb the base later on if you choose to add a third layer. Now with our upper doors on, for the final step of this phase, we're going to pick out the wooden door frame. Go ahead and replace that with a new window frame and upgrade it to stone. And with all of that said, phase 2 is now complete and we can begin working on phase 3. So for our second floor, we're going to build in a door frame, a window frame, and then a wall. And then on the back side, go ahead and fill in the oval shape all the way around the base. Let's build in a basic airlock, which will guarantee the safety of the base even further. And also add in all the roof tiles on top. I'm going to add a few wall frames in here as well for our sheet metal double door and garage doors later on. And I'm also going to flip the sheet metal double door into our airlock room, which we can then use for our triple airlock right now. And obviously, if you don't have glass windows found or researched, you can simply switch that out for a wall frame and then place in a shop front. With phase 3 now finished up, we can begin working on the honeycomb on the back side of the base. Let's start by adding in two triangle foundations off the back, right, and left side of the base. Now, if we want external TCs, we're going to have to wait to add in this middle triangle as we're going to build in the first foundation of the external now. Simply follow these steps and you guys can get a basic external TC done in just a few seconds. Now, I'm just going to leave this external foundation where it is for now as I'm going to build the TCs later on, but keep an eye on it as it will decay over some time. Now, getting back into the base, we're going to upgrade this left side wall to metal before we honeycomb as it's quite difficult later on. Hey guys, so I'm just editing and I realized I forgot something in my video. It's very critical that we place a half wall floor tile in this honeycomb on the very back end of our base. This is of course the foundation right next to our external TC. And with that said, let's continue on going around. So once we've finished honeycombing all of the first floor from the outside, let's head upstairs into our second floor and add in the floor tile here and also add in our roof access. Because we have a double door, we're just going to add in a single furnace to help us hop up. And for the next step, we're going to build all of the second floor honeycomb. So we're going to head up onto the roof for this bit and go around all of the back side of the base. And while we're up here, let's throw together our roof airlock just to finish the outside of our design. Now I hope you guys have kept your furnaces running this entire time because our next step is going to be upgrading most of our second floor to metal. Obviously this does not have to be done over one sitting, but I recommend doing this as quickly as possible since it does help with the raid cost. Notice that I'm not upgrading my 2x1 squares to metal, this is because we're saving up and we're going to upgrade these to HQM instead, just to give it a little bit of extra strength. Now heading down to our first floor, we're going to upgrade both of the walls in our drop down chute. We're also going to upgrade our window frame and all the walls corresponding with that. Now if you've gotten to this point and you have a jackhammer, I would recommend picking out this single door frame and replacing it for a double door. And if you guys don't have a jackhammer, I would recommend just keeping it as a single frame, upgrading it to metal, and trying to get a single armored door as soon as possible. Make sure that this double door frame which we add in between our 2x1 is metal. This will allow us to fit extra boxes in here and not have any issues with space. Over the course of the wipe, I would recommend trying to get your 2x1 fully armored. Now when we're ready, we can add in a garage door in between our two squares, and then we can replace our tier 2 with our tier 3. So this part of the base build is a little bit strange. Basically, vending machines have been changed a little bit on vanilla servers, so you can only place them in sockets of walls. So check by only building one vending machine and see if this works on your server. If it does, feel free to put vending machines in these slots, and if it doesn't, just replace these with a large box, and you'll just lose about four rows of storage space. After replacing all of our boxes, it's time to connect that triangle floor tile that we built in our honeycomb earlier on. We can fit two more boxes right next to our TC in this pattern as well. 
In our airlock, we're gonna replace the single door so it opens inside into our core. And then we're gonna repeat the same steps we did in our drop down chute for a little bit more storage space. If your bags are placed properly, you should be able to walk straight off by crouching on our bags and walk right into our drop down chute. This is of course also time to add in our ladder and the second half of our bunker on top. We can do this by just again adding in a window frame and upgrading it to metal. On the right side of our drop down, I'm going to add in two more vending machines. Once again, check if it's available on your server. If it isn't, I would recommend adding in a locker in this slot, and that way you can get gear sets for a quick raid defense if necessary. For our next loot room, we're going to add in this frame here, and also upgrade it to metal. And of course, if we haven't already, add in another frame for our front door. Let's add in garage doors in all of these extra slots. And don't forget to replace the sheet metal double door with a garage door in our drop down chute from the roof. Remember to keep metal smelting in all of these furnaces. If your garage door is already in place, we'll begin to build in our drop box loot room. We're going to place a campfire in the middle for comfort, and then we're going to build around all of the edges of the campfire with large boxes. On the back side of our drop box loot room, we're going to fit in our research table, as well as a large box underneath. To the left, we can also throw in an extra locker for gear sets, and don't forget to add in your traps guarding the drop downs. We can add a few extra bags upstairs, and notice that if I want a repair bench, I'm just going to place it in the airlock and remove it afterwards, as there isn't too much room for it. Don't forget to add in an armored door downstairs when you get it, and you guys can use these single boxes to help yourself jump up into the bunker. Just be aware that they do break when the bunker is demolished, so I would not recommend putting any valuables in these boxes. Now with all that said, the base is finished, so let's just head outside and build some external TCs. So for the externals, we're going to build in four of these half moon shapes, until you guys can see we get four diamond patterns leading off from the base. Once we have all those extra ones demolished and we're left with this pattern, we're going to add our TC on the 8th triangle, which should be your last diamond shape. We can then add in the TC, a window frame, a glass window, and also two roof pieces on top. Then we can add in a single door frame for a little bit of extra protection to the base. And finally, just to avoid anyone picking out any of these foundations as they are showing their soft side, we're going to build in all of these floor frames which connect to our base and will guarantee that the raider will need to spend at least 4 rockets just to gain control of the TC. Now on the front side of the base below our window, we're going to build out a square and then triangle pieces just like I show you here, and then again the half moons to create once again 4 diamond shapes and then we'll place down another TC on the edge of this 8th triangle. Of course repeating the same steps from the previous TC. This is a good time to ensure that your TC in your main base is locked so these external TCs actually have a purpose. And don't worry you will not be able to place in the very front door frame, it's normal it's just a little bit too close to the main building. So with all that said, this is the final base complete. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Of course, the final steps would be upgrading the first floor completely to metal, just like I show you here. With all that said, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.